This is my role. My eyes are on the speaker. Tell me why. Because <laughs> that looks fantastic. You look lost. Can you come where do we the water? Uh, Pitt Street Primary School in Mexborough, hey, South Yorkshire. Hello. Good morning. And who's this then? It's Holly, isn't it? I remember you, Holly. How does a top teacher lay down the ground rules for good behaviour at the beginning of the school year? I'll put your name on here for a school dinner. John Bailey's come to observe former Teacher of the Year, Libby Price, on the very first morning of her new reception class. Oh, what lovely smiley faces. Come on in, then. Libby's first job is to reassure the parents, who will be a key tool in the work she's doing with the children. It's mornings only for the first two weeks. You look in command. I mean, as a matter of fact, you're as in command of the parents as you are the children. You look very confident and in control. Is that how you felt? How do you feel at the beginning of term? I'm always anxious at the start of the school year. I'm thinking about um, where, where did I start last year uh, to get them where they were by the end of the year. Oh. When they first come into school, like this on this first day, they don't know any, they haven't got any rules or boundaries. And I don't want them sat waiting for me, I want them in and activating and getting interested and, and on with things. And I ask the parents to stay with them until the parents are absolutely comfortable that their child feels secure and, and, uh, and able to be left. If you're not settled in your environment, learning goes out of the window. Absolutely, and I always think it's the reptilian part of the brain that is in command. Basic survival things that need to be um, dealt with before you can actually teach the children. The children become receptive to new learning. I'm itching everywhere. You're itching everywhere. Oh, let's just scratch a little back just right there. That might help. Does that help? Yeah? Perhaps if you did a nice stick, it might help take your mind off it. Come in, Holly. Come on, let's have a look. There you go. Come on, sweetheart. Let's have a look. Let's have a look what you were doing just here then. Is this your picture? What a clever girl you can already write your name. If we're interested in behaviour management, in fact, what's happening here is that the children are walking into a room and finding familiar and enjoyable activities with which they feel comfortable. Is that right? Absolutely. These, to me, are nursery-aged children. They're not yet reception children. They're in a state of transition, and I've got to ease them in and make sure that the experiences that I'm giving them uh, are good, solid experiences that they can handle and deal with so that they'll feel comfortable in that classroom. That's almost like the first thing, isn't it? The provision is very important because unless you get your provision, when your provision is wrong, that's when your, your, your behaviour issues are likely to, uh, to, to occur. Do you know, I'm going to give you a clap. In fact, you can give yourselves a clap for coming to school on your first day and being such fantastic children. When you're in my class, you're Mrs Price's tigers, right? We're all tigers in this class, right? And do you know what tigers do? They go... I'm very interested in your ra. What's all this tigers and ra about? What's happening there? Um, I'm trying to give them an identity uh, so that to make them a group, to, to quickly bring them together and uh, so that we have an, a, a group identity and, uh, and we're the tigers. And it's in, and that way of going around, that's to get the children's attention and get them uh, sitting, sitting smartly and, and ready, to, uh, ready to learn. But do you know what? When I say to you, are you ready, my little tigers? You have to go, no, wait a minute, because you've got to wait for me to ask you first. And you only do it one time. Are you ready, my little tigers? Yeah. And then you cross your arms like that. It's putting routines into the day because at this 
particular point, the quicker I can establish routines, the more secure the children feel. Come on a little bit closer, a bit closer. Claire, you're sitting beautifully. Wow, what fabulous children. Goodness me. You're sitting beautifully. You're sitting so smartly. Do you know what this chicken says here? It says, good sitting, please. And you are doing excellent sitting. Well done. I'm so pleased with you. I'm just going to hazard a guess that these routines and being absolutely clear about them is probably more important than the rewards and the sanctions. Yeah, the, the, the children enjoy doing them and it, and it builds things into the day that uh, the children can relate to. I think you have been absolutely wonderful this morning, right? Give yourselves another pat on the back. But now, what we need to talk about now, Rebecca, is our class rules, something that keeps us safe in our class. What do you think would be a good rule to have in our class? No smacking! No smacking is a good thing to do, yeah? No. Yeah. Should we run in the class or should we walk? No. Walk! Walk! Right, well, I do know I'm going to write that one down then, because in this class, these tigers... Are you listening, uh, Paris? We walk in the classroom. So shall I write that down? Because that's really important to keep us safe. Why do you think we have to walk in the classroom? Because you might sleep over and hurt yourself. Right, so that would be a really good safe rule. So rule number one is we always walk. How many of them can read what you're writing down? Um, none. So what's going on? They can't read, but I'm writing them, I'm getting them in the head. We'll refer to these rules time and time and time again. But after that, I will go away and I'll write up the, room, the rules and I'll put picture clues as well on them so the children can access these rules by looking at the pictures. What would happen if yeah. everybody was shouting and loud all the time? Uh, yeah. It would hurt our ears. So what would be a good rule for that? Be quiet. Use quiet voices. Well, I'm going to shake your hand. That was a good answer. Right. Rule number two, we're going to use quiet voices. We always use quiet voices. Oh, yeah, that's this one here, this is my rule, this one, and it says, sit down and I'll read it to you. It says, we are always kind and help each other. So in this class, tigers are always kind and they always help each other. And the, my rule, that is the strategy that I used. If someone did something that wasn't uh, acceptable behaviour, I can get the children to self-assess against that statement. Yeah. I can do it! We uh, are we sharing, girls? Sit down, please. Remember, we're kind and helpful. And Claire, remember that rule about, about uh, quiet voices? You have a constant flow of language. Absolutely. Uh, that yeah. reinforces appropriate behaviour, either encourages children to renegotiate or to look at what other children are doing and, and getting on with it. So you're, you're doing a lot of cognitive work with them. And then the last resource that, that, that we use in schools, the kind of rewards and sanctions, that's going to be the last thing that you teach them. We're all going to, we're all going to stay on the sunshine. If you do something that we don't like at school, then you can't stop on the sunshine, right? Are you listening, Aaron? Watch, please, because this is really important, because if you do something unkind or something that's not helpful, then we're going to take your name off the sunshine and we're going to put it all by yourself on the rainbow. Sunshine is good. Superstar is excellent. Right? And what is the wind one not? This one is not good. And this one's terrible. If you get on the rain cloud, then I have to speak to your mummies and say, I'm very sorry, but they've broken one of our rules. So do you want to be on the rain cloud? Okay. No. Do you want to be on the rainbow? No. no. Would you like to be on the sunshine? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. 
all like to be a superstar. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's this. It's this belonging thing again. You know, we all want to be together. We all want to belong, and they all want to stay on the sunshine, not go on to the into the other parts. But um, it's a very effective way of managing behaviour, and uh, and the children can manage it themselves really. But can I get back onto the rainbow and onto the sun before the days out? You, you can get you can get back onto the uh, on. On, onto the sunshine, yes. Uh, every day starts afresh. Uh, at the end of the day, we'll put all the names back on the sunshine and, 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 and it starts again. Two weeks later, John's here to see how the children are responding to Libby's rules and routines. Libby's now had individual conferences with the parents to share her expectations and code of behaviour. She's encouraging them to spend the first 10 minutes of every day developing their children's literacy skills. Oh, the cat went, oh no! What's this? Oh, brilliant! Are you ready? Wait a minute, Chloe, sit down then, please. Right, are you ready, my little tigers? <laughs> this one, look, you have to, for, for the action for this one, you put your finger in front of your mouth. And then you pretend you're puffing out a candle. You go, puff, puff, puff. right? It's like, look, there's the candles on the pink pig cake, and you're going to puff them out. Going. Puff, 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 puff. It looks to me like there's a huge distance been travelled um, over over this ten day period. I don't see you making much use of, of external reward and sanction because that that absolutely grips. You've created teaching space. You're teaching now, aren't you? I, I must. I've got that. The, the part of the brain satisfied that we're saying about in this two weeks, we, uh, we are now able to start learning. Ahoy, my heart is! <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go then. Let's see, see what he's got in his treasure chest today. Oh, something. Money. I'm going to give you a clue. Something that you put money in and it starts with a P. Money box! Purse. A purse. 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 Remember looking for purse sounds of purse. <gasps> There's something else that's. Uh, I'm going to give a clue. They're beginning to demonstrate some resilience now. That they're staying at tasks uh, for what I think are quite long periods of time. I'm going to give a clue to Paris. Pit. Something that your mummy uses to put washing on the line with a p -p 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 peg. Peg. A peg. A peg. Good girl. Well done. Some of the five top skills or characteristics that you need to show as a reception teacher at the beginning of the year. The relationships in the classroom, the provision, the need to know who is in charge, having uh, routines in place and having your, your safety rules in place. Establishing those expectations and relationships, it's not a one-day job. Absolutely not, no. It takes a long, long time for them to build, uh, to, for them to understand your expectation because there come a time where you've only just got to look and they know. They pick up on these signals while well, these children don't, don't do that yet. And so I always think that by Christmas, the children will be mine. So I'm working up to, up to that really. <laughs> <laughs>